So the importance of population health when it comes to how we deliver healthcare services in this country is because if you think about patients who are consumers and you think about their families, the vast majority of the time, we aren't in a doctor's office. As a matter of fact, we have 5,000 hours in a given year that an American is awake. And on average, an American spends four to six hours with a clinician. Think of all the hours then that that, that person could be focused on their health or not focused on their health, um, and you quickly understand the importance of population health management. Population health management is the idea of how we keep populations of individuals healthy over time across the continuum of care. We have patients who are already very healthy consumers, who work out regularly, who eat healthy. Those individuals don't need a lot of help from the medical system. We want to encourage them to keep working out. That may be at their local YMCA. Then you have folks who are at risk for disease or starting to suffer some, from some kind of chronic illness. Folks who have hypertension, for example, or high cholesterol. Those individuals, we want to make sure they're taking the right uh, pharmaceutical regimens. So when you think about the medical neighborhood, you might want to make sure that the primary care uh, physician is in close, tact, in close contact with the pharmacy. Um, and you may want to be encouraging them to do things like work out, but also making sure that they're taking their own blood pressure, etc. So you may want to offer some health education to them. Certainly that's the case with folks who are pre-diabetic. But when you really start thinking about intensive case management, we're focused on those patients who really have a lot of complicated illnesses to manage. And that's when the medical neighborhood becomes all the more important. Think about the connection between a primary care clinician and a specialist, for example, when someone has diabetes that's hard to control. That primary care physician is going to need to be in regular touch with the endocrinologist. They're going to need to have a, a plan of care for that particular patient. Often that person has other illnesses at the same time, so they may be hypertensive. They may have um, various cardiovascular conditions. So are we also in touch um, with, with um, the cardiologist, etc.? And then you think about the kinds of supports that people who are really um, ill may also need across the medical neighborhood. Do they struggle with, with depression because they're, they're suffering from a physical illness? We know that those individuals are, are far more likely to also have depression. Are we making sure that they're um, getting access to a psychiatrist or a psychologist? How are we connecting the dots then between all of the folks in the medical neighborhood back to that patient and what that patient needs most. Certainly the patient and the primary care clinician are the center uh, through the patient-centered medical home, but the, all the supports that come in the medical neighborhood surround um, that team um, and the team of folks who work with the primary care physician, they're incredibly important. So the case manager, um, the nurse, the social worker, the pharmacist, who are all the folks inside of that primary care clinician's office um, who interact with that patient and make sure that the patient and their needs are being met first and foremost.